Just over a year and a half ago, I stepped foot in this world called the board gaming hobby. Since then, I collected many games, both great and small. No matter the size of the box, however, they all have one thing in common. They've all provided me with countless hours of amazing adventures and quests that are unforgettable. Today, I'm going to be talking about the journeys that I had in 2021. This is Solo Board Gaming Night, and I welcome you to be part of my best games that released in 2021. What might be somebody's junk may be somebody else's treasure. Remember that so you don't rob yourself from great experiences that it could exist all around you, especially when it comes to the board gaming world. With that said, I'm going to start with my number 10, The Initiative. Now, this is a game that you may have noticed. I haven't really talked about much on my channel, and there's a really, really good reason behind that. This is a mystery game that you have to solve its many mysteries if you go into this game blind i guarantee you may walk away pleasantly surprised i personally enjoy the story and the characters and i find the gameplay loop to be really enjoyable you end up placing cards and depending where you place the cards is the type of action you could do and once you place a card of a number to do that action again, you will have to place a card with a higher number value. You can never place a lower numbered value on there. You then go around the, the board collecting clues that then help you decipher the hidden message. From there, you go on to learn to solve puzzles and learn more about this crazy story that has so many twists and turns. I could even spoil a little bit right now, but I don't even want to, but think Think Jumanji, and you kind of have an idea what's going on. This is like a game within a game. And it's highly enjoyable, very unique, and a game that you definitely should keep an eye out. One day, you never know, you might be very pleasantly surprised with what you end up playing. My number nine is... Terraforming Mars Eris Expedition. This was my first Tableau style game. And I'm gonna be honest, the first time that I played this game, I felt a little bit underwhelmed only because I heard so many great things about Terraforming Mars, its bigger brother, that I was expecting to get like my mind blown. And it didn't quite blow my mind, however, one thing I did notice, the more I started playing it, the more I started like going into a rhythm and it was just a relaxing experience. And the more I played it, the more I started to appreciate it for what it is. Now, I'm not sure how this compares to its bigger brother, but I did overall ended up enjoying what I played here. It, it's, it looks nice. I enjoyed the art. Uh, the, the way that you the AI works in this game is really simple. You're not going to be doing any, any crazy. You don't have to keep up with a lot of things. It's, it's such a simple and well done AI. It just lets you focus on the task at hand. And the task is terraforming Mars. <laughs> I have a review on the on the channel if you want to look a little more into it. But yeah, if you want to give this game a chance, I, I would say temper your expectations. But with repeated play, this game gets better and better. Think of it like fine wine. The longer, the longer you have it bottled up, the better it tastes. Well, the longer you play this, the longer you, you try it out, the better it plays and the more enjoyable it becomes.
My number eight is a game that I was actually expecting it to be a little bit different than it ended up turning out being. And that is Horrified American Monsters. The reason that I say I, I prefaced this number eight with that is because I really expected Horrified to receive an expansion and it's instead what it ended up getting, it's its own brand new game. Now the difference between this one and the original Horrified is the era in which it takes, where it takes place, or when it takes place, excuse me. The game plays exactly the same. So if you enjoyed Horrified and you just wanted more variety, new monsters to fight, this game has you covered. This is a highly enjoyable game. I really enjoyed my time with this. Every creature or cryptid that exists in this game has such a different different game feeling and it, it, it has their like mini games just like the first one i i call it gameception because it's just so many games within the game itself that it it's really hard to get tired of the game because the game's constantly doing something new and you know you you know how the monster's going to react but it's just how are you going to be able to take them down this time especially the first time you're fighting the monsters you kind of do feel a really cool rush it's a very inexpensive game. I ended up getting it, I believe, for $24. And to me, that was a steal. I absolutely got $24 worth out of this game. This is an incredibly fun and entertaining game. So if you haven't done so yet, go ahead and give your uh, try Horrified American Monsters. Now, if you've never played Horrified at all, just choose uh, the game that in which the monsters call your attention most because they're both really the same. This is just more of a really good thing. For my number seven, I'm going to stick to a very similar vein to our number eight. I'm going to actually add in Alien, Fate of the Nostromo. Now hear me out. Yes, more Horrified. Why? Why would you put another game that's similar to Horrified? Because in my opinion, this game is different enough. Apart from that, I am a huge, huge Alien Isolation fan. I played that video game on its hardest difficulty. And what I enjoyed about this game and what separates this game apart from Horrified is that the, Xenoph the Xenomorph is constantly, constantly searching and hunting you. It's, it's a constant threat. And the way this game takes care of, of the way the Xenomorph follows you is you never know. It could, be, it could go through a vent. It could be anywhere. It could pop up anywhere and completely destroy any plan that you have. I really enjoy the mission system. Yes, it's very simplistic, just like Horrified, but I, I think it's the theme that just absolutely captivates me. Just like Horrified, this is a very simple game. It's not difficult. It's not so extremely deep that it's going to wreck your brain or anything. No, this is a very, very uh, 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 low weight, I guess you could say, game. It's not a heavy game at all, but it's really enjoyable. It does not take away from the fact that I had an absolute blast playing Alien Fate of the Nostromo. I think I didn't, think, I didn't expect to like it as much as I did, but I personally really enjoyed it quite a lot. My number six game is actually going to be The Loop. Now, hear me out. The Loop has driven me crazy, mad with frustration. I've gotten so angry at The Loop. And a lot of my anger has come from, we look at the back here, this time machine that Dr. Foe ends up taking over. He's creating riffs and clones of himself and He's, tr he's, because of his actions, he's creating tears in our fabric, the fabric of time and the universe, and he's about to destroy the whole entire universe as we know it. And it's our job as the agents of time to go and stop him. And what makes this game so crazy is the randomness. That machine is the bane of my existence. I can't stand that machine. I can't stand it, but I also can't stop playing it. Because this game is constantly teasing me. As, as uh, rift cubes fall and drop out of that machine, it starts adding rift cubes to different eras. And if, if too many rift cubes are added, the era is destroyed and the mission that you're on is 
failed and you can't get any more cards from there because it has a slight deck building aspect to it and oh it, it's so frustrating because of the randomness but then there's this 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 mechanic called the loop and what this loop is as you play cards as you get cards of the same the same uh, uh, type if you use the loop you get to you get to unexhaust those cards and use them again and then you could do another loop and unexhaust those cards and use them again and just keep doing it over and over and over again you could start creating so much damage and really start stopping his plan so like the way i look at it is yes that that machine is very random and the game can absolutely destroy you but also those cubes that you receive are also very overpowered themselves so it's like you get both the worlds like yes that has a lot of randomness and it goes against you but those cubes are super overpowered and they help you so it, it, this game strikes like this crazy balance that although it drives me crazy and it really frustrates me for some reason it's become somewhat of an obsession and i find myself going back to it again and again and again and again and not and not only that, that's just, that was just one game mode. There's three other game modes that are added. There's four different game modes. My point is for the price that I paid for this, I've gotten quite a lot of enjoyment. Yes, frustration as well. And if randomness is a thing that you hate, I'm going to say steer very clear from this game. But as for me, that loop mechanic absolutely makes up for it. And the gameplay loop itself is so much fun. It's just a fun game mechanic for me there's some that hate it and some that like it i tend to like it so if you have a chance see if you can find yourself a, a, a copy of the loop if that randomness doesn't scare you away i've reached my top five now and i'm gonna be honest i've been debating between the fifth and the fourth place and I was going back and forth and back and forth because I love them so much but ultimately I decided to put for number five World of Warcraft Wrath of the Lich King I'm gonna I'm gonna let you know uh, on after my number four why I chose this as my number five this is my very first pandemic style game I've never played pandemic before so maybe the reason I love the game so much is because I personally have never played Pandemic, but I love World of Warcraft. Everything in this game screams quality. And I, I'm, I'm talking about high quality here. I mean, look at this box and it's just the box. It has an amazing art style. I love the art style. I, I love the actual game mechanics itself. The card play mixed with the dice rolling, which was, to be honest, I was afraid of that when I first heard that there were dice rolls involved because I am a terrible roller. However, it's so well made. You you get that those dice work in your favor. I mean, they they are good rolls almost always. And if not... There's plenty of ways to mitigate the dice to make them uh, uh, to make them helpful for you in whatever situation that you're going through at the time. I absolutely enjoyed it. I, I like the questing. Yeah, it was a little simple, but it was fun just picking out the cards and moving along the quest the quest line. Uh, I, I, I enjoyed the battling. Once again, really simple, but overall, highly enjoyable those miniatures oh mwah, those miniatures were great I, I i think they look beautiful and i when i opened the box and saw those miniatures for the first time i was blown away but please don't don't misinterpret my excitement of the quality of the game for the gameplay like i think the gameplay takes precedent over the quality it's just that the quality is like the cherry on top and this game just, in my opinion, oh, it's so good. And it has one of the best well-written rule books I have ever read. I've never read a rule book that's so crystal clear and easy to understand. It made learning this game so painless. 
and so much fun. Do yourself a favor. Now, if, if you enjoyed Pandemic or maybe Pandemic wasn't your style personally, the original Pandemic's theme didn't do it for me. But this theme knocked it out of the park for me. I loved it. If you're even at all slightly interested in this game, just, just go get it. It's great. I love it. I truly love it and I'm so happy and I'm so glad that I got to play it this year. Now this number four was the one that I kept going back and forth with World of Warcraft. Should I put World of Warcraft four or should I put this four? And at the end of the day, I went with my number four, Burgle Brothers 2, The Casino Capers. I absolutely, oh man, I love Burgle Brothers. It is one of the most enjoyable little games that I own. You're going through a casino, think, think Ocean's Eleven. Think Ocean's Eleven, you kind of get an idea. You're, you're going and searching tiles and flipping over tiles, trying to avoid alarms from going off and trying to avoid the bouncers from catching you and trying to create distractions to move the bouncer somewhere else on the, on the map so that you could go and, and crack the safe and do what it is that you have to do all while avoiding all the, the different types of, of, of people that you have to sometimes avoid because they're, they're, they may not be helpful and some are actually helpful. And what I like about this game and the reason I put it on the number four slot is because this game changes the outcome every time you play it. And although, yes, you have different missions that you get to play in, in um, World of Warcraft, this one changes it so drastically that you're gonna most likely end up doing something completely different every single time. You see this picture right here? No spoilers, it's in the game. It's awesome, I love it. It, it, it has so much going for it. And one thing I, lo I love the art, the characters, the art, their abilities, the, the way that they play the mechanics of the game of flipping over the tiles and, and just like sneaking your way around this casino to try to get to the safe. It's so much fun. I really, really enjoy it. This is one of my favorite. This is going to be like one of these games that whenever I talk about my favorite games of all time, I will always, always bring up Burgle Brothers. That's how much I love it. So if, if you've never played it, figure out how, a way that you could get your hands on it, at least to try the game out for yourself. Maybe it won't be for you, but it definitely was for me. High enough to be in my, in my top five. That really does say something. So, Burgle Brothers 2, the Casino Capers, makes it to my number four slot. And with that, I'm already in my number three. This was really fast, really enjoyable. I'm just going to get right into it. My number three, Bullet Heart. This is, oh, you know what, I also have the expansion, but let's just talk right now about Bullet Heart. This game is way better, way better than it has any right to be. And I'm going to tell you why. And it's so simple. I'm pretty sure you know about this game already. It's a bullet hell type game. It's, it's a really quick game to play. So how, how is it number three? Because it's really that good. And there's so many ways to play it. You could play it solo. And I'm talking about true solo where you're fighting like a boss. Just you versus the boss. You could play it co-op. You could play it competitive. You could play it getting a high score. Trying to, to see how long you could last. There are so many modes for this game. And not only that, there's so many different characters that all the heroines act completely different. They play completely different. And no matter uh, uh, who you play, it just changes the game so drastically. You're gonna have to constantly be changing your strategy. And what's really cool, every single one of the heroines have a boss mode, which you get to then turn around and fight in the solo mode, which is so well made and it's not even tacked on. It is not a tacked on mode at all. It feels like it's very, very own game. 
I'm gonna try to show you the back. I hope nothing falls out because I got everything in there. This game is so, it's just pure fun. I wanna say, if, if, if I were to call this game anything, I would just say it's pure fun. It may not look like much when you're looking at the box, but the gameplay, and I'm gonna put some pictures out there just so you could see, it looks great on the table. It looks great, so good. I recommend you get these coin capsules to if you don't have like the deluxe version so that you can make mixing the the bullets in the bag worth it but why if you like these match three puzzles and stuff like that that you get all over the the i personally don't like them but my wife does you could get somebody that likes games like that to play this game like i can't stand those types of games and i love this because the the twist that they use to pop or destroy the bullets Using the cards with a certain pattern where you have to make sure you put the bullets in a certain pattern is just genius. And the way you avoid damage by not letting the, the bullets fall down to the bottom of the screen, it, it's so good. This is the only game, let me tell you, my wife hates board games. Every time I say, hey honey, do you want to play a book? All I see is like smoke because she moves so fast that all I can see is like the, the, the dust that she left behind. She avoids board games at all times. However, whenever I pop this game out and bring it on the table, she always says, can I play? Can I play my way? There's times that she even asked me to play. <laughs> like we're, we're doing something completely different. She's like, hey, do you mind if we play Bullet? Wow, this game got my wife to play. And then my, my youngest is 14 years old. He and My kids don't like board games either. But my 14-year-old is constantly asking me, hey, I'll play this with you. I'll play, this game gets played so often in my house. It's insane. And it's all thanks to the clever gameplay. It's so quick, so short, but I guarantee you that even though the game's like, I would say roughly 15 to 20 minutes, maybe a little more, but it, that's about right, 15 to 20 minutes. It's so fun and straight to the point that it's a guaranteed you're gonna play maybe two, three, four games in a row before you even stop. So this game, this game has content in it and it's so good. I love it and it rightfully deserves the number three spot of one of the best games that I played in 2021. With this number two, I find myself going back and forth so much. Once again, I'm like, should it be number one, number two? I don't know. They're, they're, it's just so good. But I had to make the list. It could literally be number one as well. But I did end up placing it number two. And that is Madara. Madara is a game that absolutely just keeps blowing my mind over and over and over again. But I will let you know one thing. Midara is a very, very difficult game to play. It's a difficult game to learn. There's a lot of mental gymnastics that you're going to have to do to be able to enjoy this game. But if you jump that hurdle, if you are able to overcome that obstacle, I promise you that Midara will give you an experience unlike no other. An actual RPG experience. It's the closest I've ever come to playing a Persona game in board game form. It's so jaw-droppingly great of a game that I'm constantly thinking about it and I'm not even close to being done with it because the book is thick. It's huge. And the game just keeps going and going and going and going. And I don't mind. If I'm not playing the, the actual main mission, I'm on a side quest. It's, it's so epic, so good. I love the characters. I love the storytelling. I love the art. I love the colors. I love everything about this game. I don't love that it's hard to fit everything back in the box. But this game is... Gaming Nirvana. If you like story in your campaign and a long, long story at that, look no further than Midara. It's 
very, very well worth the time and effort it takes to make your way through it. I've just, it's, they, it constantly keeps throwing so many twists and turns and, and, and meeting new characters. Now, one thing I will say, the miniatures might not be the best of like detail that you'll see. Like it's not the most detailed miniatures out on the market but they look beautiful they do the job the cards are stunning the colors are stunning the gameplay the combat is second to none this is combat at its finest it's great combat i love it there's a lot of dice rolling there's also a lot of mitigation i don't mind you level up you get better equipment you get better items it's it's such a great game and a story that's actually worth its weight it's really worth going through and making your way through it and this is just act one i cannot imagine what act two and three will bring but so far i want to say that madara has been an absolute treasure of a board game that i have played in 2021 And my favorite solo board game that released in 2021 is Descent Legends of the Dark. Now, I know that this game has plenty of controversy attached to it. Some of it's justified and some of, some of it's not so justified. But when it comes to pure gameplay, the adventure this game offers is really second to none. I love it. I enjoy it. I love the feeling of when you're building the, the world, the level. It starts feeling like, like when I was building Legos as a kid. I started with something. I really didn't know what I was going to get or how it was going to look like when it was all said and done. But that feeling of building the world that you're exploring and going through this dungeon. And, it, and, and it's multi-layered. It's so beautiful it looks beautiful on the table it looks beautiful when you're looking at it the miniatures beautiful mini uh, miniatures great detail all around amazing and once again none of that means anything if the game does not have the gameplay to back it up and descent legends of the dark has that in spades there's so many tactical decisions that you can make i i play four-handed and i don't care you don't need to play four-handed i choose to play four-handed and i love it i love leveling up the characters i love going to the blacksmith to get better weapons i love the the i, I even enjoyed the story i i did I liked it. <laughs> I loved everything. I loved the way you interact with the terrain. I love the combat itself. Yes, it's dice rolling, but once again, plenty of mitigation. The way fatigue is used is, is genius. I, it's such a fun mechanic. It's, it's so well thought out and so well done that I, I, I just had a smile on my face. Every moment that I spent playing Descent Legends of the Dark. And I, I want to see it again. I can't wait for Act 2 and Act 3 and whatever else they end up releasing in between. I, I'm, I'm sold. I'm sold because I had such a great time with Descent Legends of the Dark. I, I really can't emphasize or state it enough. It's a great, great dungeon crawler. I love it. It's so well made beautiful all around there's some things with the art that i could say yeah you know they could have probably done a little bit they could have done a few things a little bit different but it does not it does not take away from the experience for me personally i truly enjoy this game i i even like the way the app runs it, it does everything like sometimes when i'm playing madara and I'm so into like all these things that I have to track in Madara. Then I go and I play Descent Legends of the Dark. It's like it's like a breath of fresh air. I was like, I was like, 
Oh, it's, that's nice. It's nice that I get to finally do something and focus on, uh, like, like focus on the adventure without like freaking out all the time. <laughs> And, and that's not a knock on Madara. It's just Madara's like that. That one's hardcore. And this one's hardcore too, but the app takes a lot of the number munching and crunching and it, it does it for you and it helps you just focus on the task and the, the adventure at hand. And, and I, I, I like it. I like it. It's so well implemented. It's so well done. It's, it's enjoyable. I, I really enjoyed it. So that is my number one solo board gaming that released in 2021. So there you have it. That concludes my top 10 favorite solo board games that released in 2021. I'd love to know how many of the games I have on this list that you've played and what you think about them. Even more so, I'd like to know if out of the games that I've talked about here on this list, how many of them are you going to be looking and seeking out yourself to try to get your hands on? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. But before you go, I do want to talk about one thing. I'd like to take this opportunity to talk about the small YouTube community out there like myself that uh, tries to bring as much content and as much of this board gaming hobby that we know and love and are so passionate to as many people as we can. And uh, just like myself, the, the content creators that I'm about to mention here, uh, they're very, very passionate about board gamings in general. And uh, I'd like to just bring it to your attention just in case you've never heard of them before. Uh, first is Mikey's Boardroom. Uh, he's, it's a husband and wife duo where they do a lot of Let's Plays and a lot of uh, reviews, a lot of funny little... They have a lot of funny banter back and forth. I really think that he does a lot of high quality content. And uh, I think you should check out Mikey and his wife, Krissa. They're, they're amazing content creators. They seem like they're having fun every time they turn on the camera. And go check them out. I'd also like to bring to your attention me, myself, and Dice. He's... This guy is a, he's a solo gamer as well. He's, he, he's one of the reasons that I learned about the game Warp Sedge. Until this day, Warp Sedge is one of my favorite board games uh, that, that I've played. It's on my top 10. If you've seen the list, you'll know what I'm talking about. Show him some love. He's, he's so passionate and he's, he's so cool and calm. and He's, he's just like a, a cool guy. I, it's, it's fun to hang out with him. Every time I watch his videos, it's like I'm hanging out with him. Uh, and also, I'd like to throw a little special shout out to uh, uh, Brews and Board Games. Uh, that's another channel that this guy's really passionate, loves his Too Many Bones and his Cloud Spire. And he's, he, he's into the heavy, you know, the heavy games. And it, it's just fun to watch him. And he sips his brews while he's playing. And he's just a really, really calm and and chill guy and all of them are outstanding content creators and if you haven't heard of them before stop by drop a like and you never know you might find another opinion that you appreciate they all bring something new to the table we all do and we do it because we love board games because of our passion for board games because of you the community in the board game community in general it's because of you that we do it, because it's the conversations that we have together that make what we do so much fun. This was Solo Board Gaming Night. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you guys have a great game night. Take care.